In our message of faith today, we want to begin some studies in how to pray for the sick to be healed. There are several methods set forth in the Word of God, and I trust you'll be present at all the broadcasts in which we deal with this, because if you know all the methods, then the sick will always be healed, because one method is used sometimes and another at another time. Now, it's interesting in Matthew 10 that when Jesus sent the twelve forth to preach the kingdom of God, he told them to heal the sick in connection with preaching that message of the kingdom. And as you go preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand, then he said, Heal the sick and cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. And then over in Luke chapter 10, when he sent forth the seventy, he told them to go preach, and then he said, Heal the sick that are therein, and say unto them, The kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. Now it's interesting that the church today teaches the truth that when you're saved, you do enter the kingdom of God, and yet they deny divine healing for today. And Jesus shows the inseparable relationship between healing the sick and the message of the kingdom, that healing the sick is evidence of the presence of the kingdom. He said, as you go preach, heal the sick and say, the kingdom of God has come nigh to you. And so when the sick are being healed, it's evidence of the presence of the kingdom of God. Now, healing was not a sideline with Jesus or the apostles or the early church, and God doesn't intend that it should be a sideline today. Anyone who can read can see that healing is commanded in the Great Commission in Mark 16. He said, These signs will follow them that believe in my name. They'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Anyone who can read can see that healing has been set in the church. 1 Corinthians 12:28. He's given some the gifts of healing, he tells us. Anyone who can read can see the ministry of healing is given to the elders of the church in James 5. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith will heal the sick. Now, God has set forth several basic methods of praying for the sick, praying for the sick to be healed, and no one method is always sufficient. And so we need to know the various ways in which the sick are to be prayed for, are in which they can pray for themselves. So we'll be dealing with those methods in these messages. The first method is the prayer of faith by the elders of the church, James 5, 13 to 16. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall heal the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he hath committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now he says in verse 13, If any is afflicted, let him pray for himself. You can pray for yourself. Now an affliction is something like a deaf ear, maybe a heart condition, a person is lame or whatever, he's not bedfast, it's not a terminal case, he can pray for himself. You should have the faith to pray for yourself. We'll touch on that later. But the term in verse 14, is any sick among you, the term in Greek suggests the idea of being bedfast or incapacitated, helpless because of the illness. They may be in pain, it may be terminal. They're really sick. And the phrase, the Lord will raise him up, indicates this, that he's bedfast. Now, the key idea here in James 5 concerning this method is that it implies faith on the part of the sick person because it's the sick that is told to call for the elders of the church. The church is not to run around to find out if any of its members are sick, but the sick person is to send word that they need the anointing of oil and the prayer of faith because they're bedfast. That implies faith on your part if you call for the elders. Now, note the clear promise the prayer of faith will heal the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. It's a mystery to me why churches who say they believe it will turn right around and pray, If it be thy will, Lord, heal the sick. The Lord didn't say anything about praying concerning his promises with, If it be thy will. That is unbelief. That's doubt. That is not stating what God said. And our testimony, our prayer, our confession must always line up with the word of God. He says the prayer of faith will heal the sick. He didn't say sometimes, if it be my will. He didn't say some sicknesses and not others. The prayer of faith will heal the sick. 
God expects the elders to pray in faith that the sick be healed. And God expects the sick person to believe that he will be healed. You should expect to be raised up. Now, it isn't always instantly, but expect that the prayer has been answered, your petition has been heard, and that God will get you out of the bed. It may be three days later, like it was Hezekiah. When God said Hezekiah was healed, we read that it was three days later before he was able to get up and go to the temple and worship. But the point is, the healing is to be accepted when they pray, believe it's done. Mark eleven twenty four. when you pray, believe you have received, and you shall have it. But is it any wonder the sick are not being healed when the church no longer anoints the sick and prays for them? And if they do pray, most of the time it's not in faith, it's if it be thy will. Why, yes, those who pray will pray for you before they wheel you into the operating room. In other words, they're following man's teaching that God heals through the doctors and the medicines and the surgery today, that this is the way he does his healing. Or sometimes, if they do pray for you, there's no faith in their prayer because they're entertaining the thought, well, maybe God's trying to teach this brother something through this sickness, and he won't be healed. Or perhaps it's not God's will to heal this sister, maybe he wants to take her home. I remember back in the days when I used to go the surgery route, when I did not trust God as a Baptist pastor. I'd never been taught these things, and so I trusted the doctors and the medicines in the hospital instead of the promises and the word of God that healing had been provided in the atonement of Jesus and promised in his word. And I remember after surgery, one of the teachers from the school where I taught came and prayed for me, and he prayed the usual old denominational prayer of unbelief, and then he ended it, Now, Lord, show this brother whatever lesson you're trying to teach him through this sickness. You see, he assumed that God was trying to teach me a lesson. Well, you say, wasn't God trying to teach you something? Yes, he was. He was trying to teach me that I wouldn't have had to have had that surgery or be sick if I just believe his word. Yes, that's the lesson he's trying to teach you. If you believe the word, you won't need the medicine, the pills, the doctors, and the surgery, and the pain, and the expense. That's a great lesson. Thank God I finally learned it. But I didn't learn it until after I got the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, the scriptures teach there are no exceptions to healing. There are conditions to be sure, and that's why we labor in the Word, to show you what's required to appropriate your healing. We have the literature. We have the tapes. Send for the book and tape list. We've got hundreds of tapes. I've written ten books that will get you into the Word of God and show you how to meet the conditions and appropriate what God has provided for you. There are no exceptions, Matthew twenty one twenty two. See if you can find an exception in this verse. He said, All things whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. Now, where is the exception in that? All things whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. Are you sick? Then ask in prayer, believing, and you shall receive. Now, what about the conditions? Well, that's James five fourteen and 15. All things whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. Matthew twenty one twenty two. Now put with that First John five fourteen and 15. We have this confidence in Jesus that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And we know that if he hears our prayers, we have, past tense, we have the petition we desired. Put all of that together. Put those two scriptures together. What do we have? All things you ask. Believing you shall receive, and when you ask, ask according to my will. In other words, all things whatsoever you ask in prayer according to my will, believing you shall receive. Now that assumes you're going to pay the cost to get into the word of God to know the will of God. Here's the way you're going to find his will in his word. We must know his word to know his will. Because it is in his word that he sets forth the promises of divine healing and the conditions we must know and meet to obtain these promises. As Bosworth says in his book, Christ the Healer, prayer may be compared to playing a game of checkers. That is to say, God sets forth certain rules and he always abides by his rules. He will never move out of turn. He'll not move when it's your turn to move. Now, he's provided healing in the atonement, and he's clearly promised it again and again in his word. Now, he's not going to move. He's not going to do another thing on your behalf until you move. He's done all he needs to do about your sickness. He's provided healing in the atonement of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 53, Surely he hath borne away our diseases and carried away our pains, and with his stripes we are healed. 
Now, you won't get that in the English translations because most of them have been translated by people who don't believe in divine healing any more than the church today believes in it. But that's what the Hebrew says. And even if you can't read Hebrew, you can read English. And in Matthew eight sixteen and 17, that passage from Isaiah is quoted. And we're told there that when Jesus healed the sick, he was fulfilling the prophecy of Isaiah, which said himself took our sicknesses and our diseases upon him. In other words, he carries them away at the cross. And so God is waiting for you to move on behalf of his promise in the word. And when you move, then God will move. He will send healing. And then it's your move again. You're supposed to confess and act like you're healed even before you see it. If you believe you're healed, then you will act like it. Now, God is not going to change his rules. All the praying and pleading and begging in the world will not cause him to make an exception for you. An answer to prayer is getting your requests in line with the will of God. And to do that, you get your prayers in line or in harmony with the word of God. One woman, for example, said to me, she said, for years I've trusted God for healing for this or that, and God has always healed me. But she said there was one condition I just couldn't get a healing on. I've been prayed for many times for this, and I've claimed it, but there's no improvement, no change. And then she said, I heard one of your tapes entitled What Faith Is, and you stated on that tape, you quoted Mark 11:24, stating that we are to believe we have received when we pray, not when we feel better, not when the symptoms improve, not when the medical reports say we're healed, but we are to believe we are healed the moment we pray for healing. Well, she said, I saw where I was missing it. I was waiting to feel better. I was waiting until the symptoms left before I believed I was healed. You see, she was not accepting her healing. So she said, I accepted my healing. I said, Lord, I believe I am healed and I shall have it. Why, she said the healing was manifested in two days and I've been waiting for years to get a healing about that condition. Why, yes, my friends, we have to know the will of God before we can meet the conditions of God. Now, he plainly says, when you pray, believe you have received. He doesn't say, wait until you feel better or the symptoms leave. He says, when you pray, believe you have received and you shall have it. When are you to believe you're healed? When you pray. When you pray, believe you have received and you shall have it. Now, we stress Mark 11:24 and all of our teachings on faith and healing. That's the key to our ministry. God has sent us forth with that message from his word. We are to believe we have received the answer to our petition when we pray. That's faith. Anyone can believe a thing when they see it or when they feel better, but God is maturing disciples in this end time. He's raising up a great army of believers that he's going to use to minister to others. Now, if you'll tune in to the next broadcast, we will continue the message on how to pray for the sick to be healed.